So here we go, we're going to move through some of the um, theory questions that you may be asked in your theory test. So, question one, give four examples of places where you should not park a forklift truck. So, let's give you a few seconds to consider these points. Okay, so places you could highlight is anything that you need to have access to at all, at all times. So things that you need in an emergency, so if it's a fire, we're talking about fire extinguishers, emergency alarm points, we're talking about um, fire exits, um, any sort of warning signs. If it's a medical emergency, you might need to have access to first aid, box, um, eye wash, chemical spill kits, emergency showers, um, you know, access to pedestrian walkways, or, you know, any anything of that nature. Number two, two effects that ground conditions can have on lift trucks. So I'd name the effects that the ground conditions can have, not name two ground conditions. People often get this one wrong. So the effects that ground conditions can have on the truck well, if we're talking about um, a pothole, it could affect the stability of the vehicle. It could affect the condition of the vehicle. It could potentially damage it. Um, if we're talking about um, water on the ground, it could reduce traction. It could cause skidding. Um, you know, there's a whole range of different things that you know that could occur. Question three in relation to a lift uh, rate of capacity. Um, what three bits of information must be printed on a lift truck's plate? This is something that we saw in the previous presentation. Things that were highlight highlighted were the maximum lifting capacity, the maximum height at which the load can be lifted, and also the maximum load centre. Question four, name four checks that you must make to a load before you pick it up. Well, before you pick up a load, you need to ensure that the truck is able to lift the load. So you need to be aware of the weight of the load. You need to be aware of the height of the load, the width of the load, the length of the load. So one, so you know, to ensure that you're not exceeding the load center of the of the vehicle, uh, and just to make sure ultimately that you're able to transport the load safely. You know, you may very well need to widen your forks if the load is particularly wide for example um, you could also check the condition of the pallet make sure that the load isn't um, likely to you know break through the pallet it'd be a good idea to also be aware of the nature of the load i.e is it a live load or is it a dynamic load is it going to be moving around and also the contents of that is the content dangerous is it a flammable substance you're dealing with, for example? Um, question five, why would you never drive across an incline? Well, if you were to drive across an incline, the load would be more likely to tip off, the truck would be more likely to tip over, and ultimately the truck is not built to do that. The truck is not manufactured to drive across an incline. Question six, who is responsible for checking that the lift truck is in a good working order before use? Well, that's always the operator. The operator would be required to make sure the condition of the vehicle is safe and appropriate. Question seven, the lift truck's maximum carrying capacity will be reduced when what? So when the load center increases, i.e. when the load moves towards the tips, of the forks, the truck is able to carry less weight at that point. So the answer for there, the answer for that one, sorry, is A. The load center increases. It's whose responsibility is it to ensure the safety of pedestrians while operating the lift truck? Well, the lift truck operator. They need to ensure that people around them are safe. You know, it seems relatively reasonable that the pedestrians themselves will need to make sure that they are safe. But if, if we're talking about operations of the vehicle, it's always going to be the operator.
we need to make sure that pedestrians are safe. So the answer for that one is A. We have here, the last thing you do before you move the vehicle, an easy way to remember this is the acronym GOBO, G-O-B-O, -G gear, observation, brake, observation. Observation would be C, look around. So just remember GOBO, gear, observation, brake, observation. Question 10, lift trucks are more likely to turn over sideways when they are doing what? The answer there is when they are carrying no load and then when they are turning sharply. So remember we said in the presentation because of the stability triangle, the narrowest part of that triangle is near the back of the truck, near that, that central wheel. So the combined center of gravity of the load in the truck is more easy to move outside of the triangle left and right in a lateral manner um, at that point. So placing a load on the front will draw the center of gravity further forward and make the vehicle more stable laterally. So if it's not carrying the load and laden and it's turning sharply, it's going to be very, very likely to tip over. So the answer there is D. The lift which rating capacity applies with a mast in which position? So when we had a look at the rating plate in the previous presentation, the image at the bottom right hand corner of that rating plate where it was highlighting A and B, A being the max height, B being the max load centre, you could see that the mast was vertical. It wasn't tilted forward, it wasn't tilted back, it was in a vertical position. So the answer there is A. When driving an unladen truck, how should the forks be set? So when you're driving the truck with no load, how would you position the forks? Well, you would need to have the load as low as practicable and also with back tilt. So the back tilt is going to be dependent on the ground conditions that you that you are dealing with. If it's slightly bumpy, maybe you want just a little bit of back tilt. If it's particularly bumpy, you'd want more back tilt, of course. But generally, you just want to have a little bit of back tilt. Um, as low as practicable, practicable is also practical abilities, obviously, also dependent on the ground conditions. The bumpier it is, the higher you need to carry the forks to avoid the load, the forks being scraped across the floor. But generally, on a flat terrain, you want to be sure that the fork heels are about four to six inches clear of the ground. When sounding the little horn at a blind corner, how should you go about doing it? Nice and simple. Beep, beep, beep. Several short, sharp blasts. That will, you know, be an effective way of notifying people of your presence. Health and safety legislation places responsibility at work on who? If you remember, we looked at the different sections of the Health and Safety Work Act. Section 2, 7 and 8. 2 was that of the employers. 7 was that of the employees and then eight was that of visitors so it's everybody who's in the premises C. Undercutting. So undercutting is when the load is not carried up to the heel of the fork, it's when the, uh, the load is not closer to the tips unnecessarily. Um, the reason we would use this is if the forks are longer than the pallet and the pallet is adjacent to a wall or another pallet or for whatever reason the pallet can't be healed up immediately so let's say for example if you are going onto the back of a, of a wagon and you're trying to remove the load but the load is adjacent to another load and going all the way through would skewer the load that behind the one that you're trying to pick up or if for example if the load is too far across the um, the lorry bed that you're unable to actually lift it up correctly in which case you'd undercut the load as little as possible, lift the load, pull it back towards you for via reversing, and then lower it down as immediately as possible, and then fully heal it up. In normal circumstances, if the load on the forks obscures your view, how would you want to operate? In normal circumstances, i.e., on a flat ground with sufficient space for you to operate. Ideally, you'd want to be able to see where you're going, so you just travel in reverse, looking in the direction of travel. You wouldn't ask the supervisor to guide you with hand signals. 
You would do this in certain circumstances, but in normal circumstances, just travel in reverse. So if, for example, you were driving up a hill, on, you know, you're driving on a bank, you would then opt to have a banksman because you don't want to turn the load around. You want to make sure the load is facing uphill because of the stability of the vehicle. So the answer here, normal circumstances, just go, just go backwards. When parking a lift truck, how would you position the forks? Well, you'd want to make sure that the forks are in a safe position, i.e. the tips are on the ground and the heels are as low as possible. This produces the um, smallest trip hazard possible. So tips on the ground, heels as low as possible. We've got this one here to see. Before starting to load a rigid flatbed lorry or a trailer from ground level, the lift truck operator must check what? Well, you need to check a lot of things. So you need to make sure that the lorry driver is aware that loading is about to take place. You need to check that the lorry engine is turned off, the keys are removed, and then the lorry parking brakes are applied and the lorry wheels are chopped, if necessary, of course. So ultimately, you need to make sure everything's safe before you go about performing the lift. If you lifting the load off is going to cause the trailer to become unsafe and obviously don't lift it off ask someone else to help you in that process and move things around so it's safer um, make sure the lorry's off of course you don't want the lorry to do, you know be moved forward make sure the driver's out of the way you know there's a whole range of things that you need to be checking here when an unladen truck is being driven on an incline the forks or attachment should face downhill this is to improve what? So the orientation of the vehicle on a hill is important, but for what reason? And ultimately, the reason is the stability of the vehicle. Remember, we looked at the center of gravity of an unladen truck was near the back of the vehicle. You'd want the back um, of the vehicle to be facing uphill. So when you're carrying a load, that means that the load would be facing uphill. Um, if you are not carrying a load, it means that the back wheels would be facing uphill so the forks would therefore be facing downhill irrespective of the direction of travel i.e if you're traveling up or down you'd want the forks facing downhill regardless when tilting forward at height why is there an increased risk of the trucker tipping forward this is this is something that as mentioned in the presentation, if you tilt the load forward, the combined centre of gravity is going to move forward as a result of the centre of gravity of the load moving forward. So the further forward the load goes, the more the centre of gravity combined moves forward. So the answer there is C. Question 21, why do you stop the truck no more than 150 mil or six inches from the stack before raising the forks? So why do you want to be close to the load before you lift up? Um, well, this is to ensure the safety of pedestrians. It's to assist with accuracy and also to discourage people walking between the fork tips and the stack. So obviously the closer you are, the better you can see. And also you're going to be less likely to you know, put a fork through someone. 22. The brakes on the truck you are operating seem to be faulty. What are you going to do about it? Well, the safest thing to do would be to stop immediately. And then obviously make sure you get that looked at. Seek assistance. Um, if the truck needs to be... Um, if the truck needs to be left for you to seek assistance, then you'd want to make sure that no one else uses that truck via a um, vehicle off-road label. Also make sure you would remove the keys as well when doing that. 23, as a general rule, how should the forks be positioned on the carriage plate? Take a loaded wooden pallet, wooden. So if it's wooden, you just want to have the weight balanced evenly. Spread to take an equal weight on each fork. If, however, if it's a dynamic load, if it's a live load, a metal stillage or something like that, uh, then you want to make sure the forks are you know, wider to prevent it from sliding around and moving. But generally, with a wooden pallet, you just want to take even weight on each fork. 24. The safe use of the hydraulic controls requires the following. So what would you need to do before lifting the load? You need to 
park safely so park and brake applied and the transmission in neutral you want to make sure you're in neutral so you don't accidentally press the gas um, the accelerator sorry um, and cause the truck to move forwards via you know the forward momentum of the vehicle overpowering the handbrake and the last point here remember we said gobbo what's the safest way to move forward gobbo gear observation brake observation oh, this one is a gear observation remove the brake and it says here move this should really state you know an observation lastly and then move but this is the answer that we're after a gear observation brake observation I hope that helps.